Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. That will make you part of my crafty family here on YouTube and I would love to have you as part of that. You can also sign up for my newsletter over at my website, CorinneBlackstone.com. In today's video, I want to show you guys how fun it is to sublimate on glitter. I use Caesar Glitter HTV and you can sublimate on cotton shirts, dark shirts, and it's just a really fun look because it adds that glitter to your sublimation. I'm going to show you how to do the offset and how to print and press on your sublimation. Now you don't need a sublimation printer to do this because you can order sublimation prints off of Etsy or lots of other websites. I'll link a couple down below for you guys and I'll link all the materials I use to do my sublimation down below as well. This is just a really fun thing that you can do. Now I'm going to show you because if you are not familiar with sublimation, if you order a print it's going to look very dull like this, but that's totally normal because that's just how the color looks on a piece of paper. When it turns into the gas after you heat it, it gets nice and bright and it will look like this with the bright colors. So don't fret if you get it and it looks a little bit dull. Totally normal. So let's get started so I can show you guys how easy this is to do. We are going to start in Inkscape and I'm going to show you guys how to do the offset. I like a little bit of an offset on my designs when I do sublimation on glitter. I think the little white border looks really cute and makes the design stand out a lot on like a black shirt, which is what we're doing. So the first thing that we'll need to do is to import our design over here into Inkscape. So what I'm going to do is go File, Import. And I'm going to find where I have my design. So that is under my sublimation designs. So it's under this folder here. I don't know why they called it new folder. I should probably rename that. But I'm going to use one of these leopard sunflowers. And I want to use this one that has some white in it because I think it looks really cool on the glitter because it lets the glitter throw, show through the sublimation. So go ahead and double click on that. It's going to bring up this PNG bitmap image import. You don't need to change anything here. Just click OK. You can always just tell it don't ask again, but just in case I ever needed it to do anything, I don't want to do that. So click OK and it's going to import your PNG. Now the first thing that I want to do is actually change the size of this. That way I know exactly what size I'm cutting this. So up here at the top, you're going to see there's an X and a Y, a W, a lock, and an H. The first thing I want to do is click on this lock. That's just like the lock that's in Design Space, so it keeps all of your proportions when you change your sizing. So I'm going to change my width, and I'm just going to go to 8.25 on width for my sunflower. Now you want to make sure that it fits within your print zone, so maybe I'll make it just 8. I think 8 actually looks a little bit better, so we'll just make it a little smaller. Now you're going to want to make sure you note that it is 8 inches wide because you'll need to know that for design space. But we'll need to know the offset size more than anything, but it's good to note what size your PNG is just so you can make sure everything is sized correctly. Now what I need to do is to create the offset for this, which is what we're going to put into Cricut Design Space. You'll need to go over to the left hand side and five up from the bottom. So you have squares, a little eyedropper, a strange square, a line, but then you're going to have a paint bucket. Go ahead and click on that paint bucket and choose any color down here at the bottom. I like to choose a bright color because it makes it easier to see. And what you're going to do is up here at the top, the fill by should say alpha. Your threshold should be 15. And when you open this, yours may be under the MM, which is millimeters. You want to change this to PT, which stands for points. Millimeters doesn't really compute very well from Inkscape over into Design Space for some reason, but PT does a lot better. The larger this number, the larger your PT grows shrink by number, the wider your offset will be. So I tested this a little bit and the offset at 50 was really, really big and I didn't like it. So I'm going to test it at 30 for you guys and let's see if we like it. All you'll need to do now is click on your image anywhere in your PNG or your sunflower. Now, for some reason, it didn't want to take my red for sometimes it does that. If it doesn't take it, just go back down and click on it. If you'd rather the bright color, ignore the dots that are in here. We're going to get rid of them. 
But the first thing that I want to do is check how big my offset is compared to my sunflower. So click on this arrow that's at the very top left. That is your selection tool. And right here at the top, right next to the X, do you see these little lines? Those are like the move down or send backwards or send forwards things in Design Space. So lower selection to the bottom is like sending backwards. So I'm going to click that and that'll show me how big my offset is compared to my sunflower. I think that looks like a really good size for what I want to do. So now before we do anything else, you're going to want to get rid of those little holes. So I'm going to click my selection tool, make sure it's selected. And what I'm going to do is click on my sunflower. I'm going to move my sunflower off so that you guys can see what's happening. Use your selection tool and click on the offset, your red blob, so to speak. Go up to path and you're going to click object to path. Click path again and you're going to go down right under combine right above inset and click the word break apart. That's going to get rid of these little inner lines, but we still need to make sure that it's not going to cut those out. So what you're going to do now is go to path and go to union, which is just under trace pixel art. That gets rid of any of those little holes so you don't have to worry about them. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to move my sunflower back over just so I can get a look at it, see if I like it, make sure it doesn't look weird. I think it looks great. So now let's go ahead and move that back off because you need to make note of what size this offset is. So I recommend writing this down. So the width on this is going to be 8.522 and the height is 8.338. These are really important things to remember because Inkscape and Cricut Design Space do not communicate very well at all for whatever reason. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this back over really quick just because. Then what I want to do is click File and I want to save this as an image. So I'm just going to call this Leopard Sun Offset and I'm saving it in my Sublimation Design folder. Click Save. Now we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space and upload this. Over in Cricut Design Space, click Upload and then Upload Image. Click Browse and you're going to go to the folder that you saved that in. So I saved that into my Sublimation Designs folder and you'll find the um, SVG. Now yours may show as an HTML document. It may be Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, any of those different internet browsers, but that is your SVG. Go ahead and select the one that you did. Now it does occasionally give you an error. Um, Cricut Design Space sometimes has its own little mind where it doesn't like to do what you want. If it's giving you an error, don't worry, just give it a second and it should be just fine. Now keep in mind that when Cricut Design Space uploads an SVG, it doesn't see it in the same way that perhaps you think it should. So it is seeing our sunflower image as a square. Don't worry, we can get rid of the square because it's a separate piece. So I know it looks weird, but you just got to trust me on this one. It's a Cricut Design Space thing. You could have deleted the sunflower if you wanted to, but we needed to make sure we kept our sunflower because we have to go back to Inkscape to print. So I'm going to go ahead and just click Upload. Now you'll see that there's going to be two of these. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it worked before I told you guys how to do this. Go ahead and select the one that you uploaded and click insert images. Once it's inserted, you can go ahead and click ungroup and then just delete the square, which is technically the original sunflower. This is the sunflower that we need for our Cricut design space. What I need to do now, remember I told you write down those measurements. We need to change the measurements up here at the top and we just need to make sure that we change the width to 8.522. The height should be close enough that it will be good as far as it will fit. This is only off by like the tiniest hundredth of an inch, so it won't matter. This is the part that we're going to cut on our glitter HTV. Now, because we're using HTV, we do need to mirror our image. So what I'm going to do is I like to just flip it on my screen. That way it is good. It's done. I don't have to worry about it at all. We're going to cut this on Glitter HTV again. So I cut my Glitter HTV on the Glitter HTV setting. It's super easy. I'm not going to make you guys watch that process because I do it all the time. But we're going to cut that again. Make sure you mirror it. Let's go back over to Inkscape because now we need to print out our sunflower. Now we need to print out our sunflower. 
but we're also going to need to mirror our sunflower. It's really important that you mirror it. If you don't, it's not gonna match up. It's just how it is when you flip it over. Just trust me on this one. This took me forever to think about, so trust me, you have to flip it. But to mirror an Inkscape, it's really easy. Up here at the top, you're gonna see these kind of weird triangles, and you'll see that you have options just like you do in Design Space. Flip selected objects horizontally or flip them vertically. We wanna flip it horizontally. That'll put this, the way I look at it, see this petal over here? That's how I kind of watch it flip. Do you see how that petal goes to the other side? I just found that to be a little bit easier. That way I know for sure that it did in fact mirror itself. Now from here we can print it. So all I need to do from here is just go file, print, make sure that you have your sublimation printer selected and click print. So just like when you do layering, I'm only gonna tack this down because we have to press the uh, sublimation right on top. So that way it's just a little bit pressed and not tons. So all I'm gonna do, and actually I need to make sure that I lower my pressure because I do have my pressure up pretty high for my sublimation. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower that. I'm just gonna press this for just a couple of seconds, just enough to tack it down. And then you can peel your carrier sheet off. You'll wanna do that pretty slowly just to make sure that all of your parts have stayed down. Now what I need to do is turn up my heat press. So to turn up my StarCraft, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. On your StarCraft heat press, what you'll do is hit this button right here that says set, and it'll take you to your first programming, which is your temperature, and I'm just gonna turn that up. I do these at 385. And this is a touch screen, so you don't need to like press it. And then you're just gonna hit set again, and then this is where you would set your time. So I do mine for 45 seconds, that's already set. And your third set is between Fahrenheit and Celsius, I use Fahrenheit. And then the next set is gonna be, this is the timer that shows how long your heat press needs to be inactive for it to automatically shut off. I keep it at 24 minutes, but you can do whatever makes you comfortable. And then you have your counter, which is how many times you've pressed. So just go ahead and hit set again. And that takes you back and we can let it heat up. Now what we'll need to do is place our sublimation design on top of our glitter HTV. Now you can trim this down if you so choose. You don't have to. I like to just because it gives me a little bit better look at to where this lines up, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down. Again, totally do not have to. So remember we discussed that long piece, this long petal that's kind of by itself. That long petal is this long petal. That's why I kind of wanted to note that with you guys because I think it makes it a little bit easier when you can kind of see like one distinct piece and figure out where that distinct piece lines up. Now you're gonna wanna get some heat tape this is a great thing to have. I got this off Amazon. I will link this below, but this is just a tape that is heat resistant. So you're able to use this on your shirts and things without it leaving residue from getting too warm. You can't just use like scotch tape. Please don't do that. You will leave residue on your shirt and it will be a big giant mess. So I'm just gonna cut one little piece right now and set the heat tape to the side. Now, because I'm doing this on a dark shirt, it's a little bit easier to see through, and I don't, you guys probably can't see it real well, but I can see through the shirt, like through the piece of paper, to see that everything is lining up. So all I'm doing is just sort of kind of getting everything lined up where it should be, making sure all the edges look pretty even and spaced out correctly. Everything looks pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna take this piece of heat tape and I'm gonna tape this down. Now I wanna tape down all the different sides because I don't want this to move at all, both during pressing and moving it back over to the heat press. This is a really important step, so don't skip this step. If this moves while it's pressing, it won't be lined up and you'll also get what's called ghosting. And ghosting is like having a shadow of your image and it just looks really bad, really unprofessional. So if you want a really good looking 
image, just make sure to use heat tape. It's really inexpensive. I got two rolls for maybe eight bucks and I've had them for a really long time. So they last forever. You get a ton. So again, I'm just making sure that I'm putting heat tape on all like the major corners. I got one over here just to hold it down when I started this, but I do like to make sure that I get all the corners. Now I don't tend to like to put my heat tape over my vinyl if I can avoid it. It shouldn't cause any damage, but I just like to avoid it if possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one more piece down. I'm gonna put one more piece right up here in this corner. And I will say the heat tape is sometimes a little bit staticky, so just be aware of that. So now that I've got that tape down, to move this back over to my press, what I like to do is I take my shirt and I fold it and I fold it and I fold it again and then I fold it one more time. That way, that is not gonna move when you move it back over to your heat press. So let's go back over, that's all heated up, ready to go, and we can get this pressed onto our glitter. Our heat press is ready to go. I've got my sublimation on top of my glitter, all taped down, nice and safe. So I did turn my pressure up. You wanna make sure that your entire design is on your pressing pillow if you're using one, and make sure you turn your pressure up because this does require pretty hard pressure and then go ahead and press. Once it's done, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lift up your press. And you may have a little bit of smoke, so don't worry, or like fumes, totally normal. It's mostly because it's pretty hot. This is also a cotton shirt, so there sometimes is some moisture that's still left in the shirt. So keep that in mind. Now we're gonna go ahead and peel our tape which not always super easy. It's really gets pretty sticky once it gets warm, but comes off, doesn't leave any residue. So I like to peel one corner and then I'm gonna go ahead and lift off my image. And every once in a while you get one that rips, but there is our sublimation. It's so cute, so sparkly. Can you guys see, look how pretty. I'll take you guys over to the table so you can really see this. And I think it came out gorgeous. So I wanted to note a couple things about this. So one thing, you can see the square from where the heat press pressed. Don't worry, that will go away as it cools. As you wash it, it's gone. This is just something that some shirts do, so don't fret if your shirt did that. But you can see how bright and vibrant that is. It's so sparkly. I used the rainbow white for this, but you can use the regular white as well. But I just think this came out really, really cute. I'm gonna show you guys a quick comparison. So this is the pressed one. You can see nice, bright, vibrant, but this is what it looks like when it comes out of your sublimation printer. It's really, really dull, so don't worry if when you get something out of your sublimation printer, it's not as bright and vibrant as you think it should be. That's partially due to the type of ink and the type of paper, but when you press it, it turns into a gas and it turns into this very, very bright, vibrant colored item and it's so cute. I love the extra white pieces in this to add to like around the little leopard prints. I think it really lets that white glitter shine through. This is so cute, so easy. And you guys can do this with just about any design that you want to. I do find doing an offset makes it a lot easier and really makes the sublimation print stand out against a dark colored shirt. Now, if you wanted to do this on a white cotton shirt and use the glitter, Absolutely, do that. You can do this on any color. You can do this on 100% cotton. You can do this on polyester. You can do this on pretty much any fabric that you want to. Really fun, really, really easy. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else crafty related, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have here. And be sure to check out my other social medias linked down below. I also have that newsletter that you can sign up for at corinneblackstone.com. I've linked everything I've used in this video down below for you guys with some coupon codes and other things that you can use to save on your purchases. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.